So Nitivot Shalom from volume B, uh, I think, and we're going to do on the month of Elul, page Resh Lamed Gimel. So, Al Ken Yomru HaMoshlim Bo Cheshbon. So the ruler will say, let's, uh, let's assess, let's make an assessment. And our sages explain, Upirshu Hazal, Al Ken Yomru HaMoshlim, Elu HaMoshlim Beitzram. Bo Cheshbon, Bo Nechashev Cheshbono Shel Olam. So it's it's from it's from uh, from the Chumash from the Torah, uh, after conquering uh, parts of uh, of Israel, right? So the rulers, who are the rulers? They're the ones that rule their inclination. What is Bo Cheshbon? Cheshbon is math or assessment or calculate. Let's calculate uh, the pros and cons. So Abiyo Beze, the explanation is there is a Cheshbon Prati, uh, like a, a private individual. Math or assessment. So all the details uh, and all the small, tiny, little thing that the uh, evil inclination is try to seduce us with. In the midot, in the tavot raot, in the stamet zerim afelim. So midot is uh, with anger. Somebody is cutting us uh, in the street, or I don't know push our car to the supermarket. So that's the middle. So how do we react to it? Or with the negative desires. Or he said, <laughs> just simple dark desires that somebody has. So that's the, the private one, the individual one, right? And then, and, and that's like, it's the, the prati, the, the thing that are like pointed to that person specifically in, 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 in that area. And then there is cheshbono shel olam. There is a more, I don't know, it's a generic calculation, which is surrounding his being in this world, because kol adam each individual is a microcosmos. Right? We said, if you're saving one, uh, one person, it is as if like you save the whole world. So, we learn from that that each person is a world, right? Everybody has his stories, feelings, etc. Everybody has a significant part. He said, Yeshlit Bonen, and we need to observe if that person basically we're talking about ourselves. If we are fulfilling our task in this world, if we are doing what we're supposed to do, and that Cheshbon, and this type of assessment, and doing this math, to do only the one that can control or rule their inclination. So the one that cannot rule their inclination, they are biased. They are influenced from their desires, from the thing, right? When we want something really bad, we will force it into our plan, right? This is uh, something that is very common, a mistake in navigation. When you when you navigate based on a topographic map, you have to look at the terrain. You look at the map and you say, oh, the table mountain is over there. There is another triangle and that's the ele elevation. And you're looking and this is how you acknowledge your location based on the terrain and based on your topographic map. This is basic navigation. You need to know where is this, where the 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 the, the north, the south, etc. So common mistake is that you are lost, you don't know where you are, you look at the map, and you really want to find your way. So you said, ah, this is the table, not exactly a table mountain, but you know what? No, no, this is the table mountain. And then you're starting to develop a deviation and a mistake because you're forcing the terrain into the map. So this is exactly what he said. When somebody is not in control with his inclinations, the good and the bad, then he's biased from the desires, from the lust, etc. And then he cannot really do a, an accurate map. But only the one that control, they can see the thing truly. Right? So the time is a trigger. So right? we know that Chodesh Elul is the preparation for Rosh Hashanah, Yom Kippur, right? Sukkot, the Yamim Anoraim. These are like the the, uh, the mighty fear days. We need to, to do the private math and the general math, etc. And each year, it's by itself. 
each year is a separate unit inside the creation. As it says in the Yesoda Avodah, it's a book, and he talk about it lengthily, about, yes, if each day of the sixth day of the creation, right, until now, he said it's a rejuvenating each day, right? Each day is a new day. And it has a special tikkunim for each day, for Sunday, for Monday, etc. Then specifically or specially, each and every year, you have a spiritual rejuvenating. And that new midah, he said, it's been influenced, umit pashetet, bebiah, right, in the world. And everything that is happening and rejuvenating or renewed by the person, we say by the Adam, by the person, is like a ladder that is standing on the ground and the head goes to heaven. Which means that we have an influence in what we do, not only in this world, but in the other spiritual world that uh, maybe we don't feel it or we don't see it, but we know there exists. And it says in Torah Tavot, Parashat Veyetze, right? Yaakov Avinu. So he's asked his question. Okay. So he said, Berosh Hashanah Nidon Olam. So he said, in, in Rosh Hashanah, in the Jewish New Year, the whole world is being judged. Right? But, but we are davening every day, which means a person or the world is being judged every day. But then we have another place that says that the world is being judged every year. So what's going on here? He said, Amar, Adam, a person is being judged every day. Right? So we know that, for example, every day it's for the small things. That for, for that day and for the year it's the it, it, it's globally is being judged right and then also according to the whole world compared to it he said and according to that perhaps we can explain it that anything that is relevant or touching each and every soul in his private map and they're re re rejuvenating every day as they said a person is judged every day but the rejuvenating that is actually relates to the entire world, to the creation each and every year, right? That's the big math, the big numbers. Because as said, you said, in Rosh Hashanah, Aulam Nidon, the entire world is being judged. Small example, you know, the, the, my Rav told me, and, and I, I read it many times in other stories, somebody had a very difficult uh, Nisayon in his life, and he had maybe a, a challenged kid, and the kid was really suffering. And that person, that parent, whatever, let's say he was a single parent, and it was difficult for him to work and take care of the kid, etc. And the kid was suffering, so he died, and so the kid will die. Well, what's the point of that kid to live in this world? He's not communicating, he's disabled, you know, he's just suffering pain and, and surgery, and whatever. And you know, Baruch Hashem, the kid died. A few days after the father died. The whole purpose of the father to be alive and remain in this world was to take care of the kid. He didn't know. Nobody knows that. So when that reason is no longer relevant, that's it. The father's purpose in life is over. It's gone. So this is like the, the general calculation that is for the whole world. That we've been judged every day, privately, but... Rosh Hashanah, it's where do we fit in the big picture holistically in everything together? And each year have a special rejuvenating, a special one that is in the in the entire creation with a new purpose, probably. Every year, it's like a reset. Everything is coming back to the same time that it was in the creation of the world. Interesting. And according to the Rambam, he said, it said the, way, the same way, the measuring or way, the sins of a person when he dead, when he died, the same thing, so the, the way and the measure, the sins every year, even when he's uh, with alive. He said, 
maybe it's extra or, or it's not necessary that comparison that the same way they wait the way while he's dead, he said, no, you just said that you, you measure his sin every year. Don't say that. So the same way when he's dead, when already he finished his task or his purpose in the world, whether if he fulfill it, or maybe like that's the story about the father that he asked Hashem to kill his son, and this is what happened, and he didn't fulfill his task, but he's no longer relevant. So he said, that's the way of it. That's the measure. It's, it's every year, it's a unit by itself. And the previous year is, is done, is over. Now you have a new reality, a new year, maybe with new new task to do. And this is hinted in our parasha, right? I said, we're not going to learn the parasha, but we have to mention it because this parashiot, right? Shoftim, Vietze, right? Vietze, et cetera, they're always the one before uh, Elul. So he says here in, in Shoftim Veshotrim, judges and officers, you should put or nominate or, or appointed in all your gates. So he said, there are different gates that it's related to. Call your Adam, like every day, is a gate, is a portal. Every day that we have is a portal, the portal of today. And each Rosh Chodesh, right? Today is Rosh Chodesh. It's also a portal, a gate. And also there is another portal or a gate, which is Rosh Hashanah. And that's the portal for the whole year. So the Shah or the portal or the gate, it's a it's a place or, or time for observing where we're going in and what for. And that's a very difficult thing to be aware and to think all the time what's our purpose in life, where I'm going into. It's uh, very difficult to stay awake, right? Very difficult. This, so he said, and that's the purpose, that, or that's the task for us in Rosh Hashanah. It's a time to think about where we fit in in the world, not only privately, but in the, in the entire creation. But it says it's not mainly about the past. It's mainly about the future. And that's why, for example, for a few reasons, uh, there is an Indian to, to accept upon ourselves a Kabbalah. Kabbalah is acceptance of something. So, yeah, whatever we did, the year is longer, the year, the year is gone. So we repent, we, we try to do tshuva and we regret what we did. But he said the main thing is not that. The main thing is what, do, what we're going to do moving forward. And for moving forward, there is a minhag for many people to, to, to take a Kabbalah on themselves. And it doesn't have to be a big one. It's not, I'm going to learn six hours a day. Something really small, but every year we have to, to get something, but small, that we know that we will be able to keep it. So, for example, we can decide during Gidusha, I don't move until the bracha is over. Many people, you know, before Mechaya Metim, they're moving, they're sitting, etc. So it's a Kabbalah, it's very easy to do. It's only to wait five to seven seconds after the, uh, the Gdusha is over. And you said, I wait in the end of the Bracha. That's a Kabbalah. Right? And that will help us to, like it's we're putting on a spiritual task that will help us and helping Shamaim to, uh, <laughs> you know, to treat us better in the... Uh, in the generic calculation, because we are we are no longer the same person, and we're getting a Kabbalah, and we want to get progress uh, moving forward in our in our Ruchniut. So he said, and that's the portal. That's Rosh Hashanah. This is what what you're going to do, not on the past. al Atid. How are we going to get into Rosh Hashanah? Well, Yaakov Yosef on the Parashat let's say again. He says, and the sages said, three books are opening in Rosh Hashanah. Complete righteous, right? So the king Murim, Nichtavim and Hatamim Le Alta, right? The Khaitovim, the complete righteous people, they are being signed off positively, and that's it for a good life. Complete wicked people, Hasba Halila, they're you know, they're not going to go to a good place. And he said, I know she niftahim as farim, these books are open in front of each and every person that he should write himself in the future. If he's accepting upon himself, okay, from now on, I'm going to be a righteous one. Then he will be written in the righteous ones. Or the opposite, if he thinks that he's going to be like the wicked people, that he wants to fulfill his desires or 
he still have something to accomplish that he didn't accomplish yet, but on a negative side, then he's not going to be in a good place. And therefore it says, Shoftim veshotrim, judges and, and officer, you should give in your gate. And these gates are Rosh Hashanah, you know, what we're going to do? To put the person on Yehudu Betafkido. And we're going to finish in two minutes. So this is rejuvenating each and every year. We need to explain al derech ha'avodah, right? So derech ha'avodah is in serving Hashem on on uh, on the Hasidut uh, way. So it's like a war, right? So now it's giving an analogy. Same way in the war, we see that the enemy, the other army, have lots of weapons. But it's an old style, old school weapon. A bolt action rifle. Okay, and we have semi-automatic or automatic. And the other uh, enemy have maybe more sophisticated one. New style, right? State of the art. So then the old weapon have no value. No value. So that's the analogy. And what's the what's the 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 moral of it? The same way when we're fighting the inclination, because the inclination is an enemy which is trying to overcome us again and again, he's rejuvenating as well. So the old weapon that we used or the old trick that we used in past years are not good enough anymore. Every year we have to find new tricks, new paths, a new way to, to fight. And we need to find advisors how to find that new weapon. And we're going to finish here, and we're going to continue with Rat Hashem next week, and we're going to finish it until uh, Rosh Hashanah. Thank you for listening, and have a great Shabbat.